Situated in the Atlantic Ocean, some 45 kilometers off the southwest peninsula of England, are the Isles of Scilly. The Isles are home to over 2,000 people, with the vast majority living on the biggest island, St Mary's. An attractive tourist destination, St Mary's served as an annual summer retreat for former British Prime Minister Harold Wilson, who's buried here. What brought Transworld Sport to this remote part of the UK was the chance to find out more about the Scilly Isles Football League, which lays claim to being the smallest in the world. The of the League, as far as I know, started back in the 1910s, 1920s. That's when they used to have an inter-Ireland league, as all five um, islands participating. And that lasted up to about the 50s, 60s, and then it slowly petered out and then became the Rangers and the Gunners, I believe. Um, that was about 20 years, so about the 80s, and then the Garrison Gunners and the Woolpack Wanderers were the two, main, well, the two names that took over and continue still today. Anthony Gibbons is the chairman of the Isles of Scilly Football League, which today, following the demise of the Inter-Island League, consists of just two teams. The teams in question are the Woolpack Wanderers and the Garrison Gunners. They've been playing each other every week since 1984. Four seasons Along with being chairman of the league, 30-year-old Gibbons is also vice-captain of the Gunners team. I wrote a letter to the Guinness Book of Records and they said we weren't high enough standard to, to be recognised, which I was, thought was a bit weird. The problem is we're only one club split into two teams, effectively playing friendlies every week. So they wouldn't do it, which is, which is a shame really, but un unofficially we like to call ourselves the smallest league in the world. I haven't seen any smaller. The two teams play each other 18 times in the league, once in the final of the Wholesalers' Cup and over two legs to decide the winners of the Four Deck Cup. There's also a charity shield played at the start of each new season. The league's funded by the players, really. So we pay our, our subscription fees at the start of the season, and we haven't got that much that many outgoings. And so we got a, I think we got to rent the pitch off the council or a duchy, but it's pretty much all our outgoings. The league is held from November to March, and every match is played at Garrison Field. It's the only pitch on St Mary's and a place where conditions aren't always ideal for a game of football. I'm not situated in the best place, it's right on, on the top of Garrison Hill. So you get, you get all sorts of weather up there, usually, usually uh, rain and wind, but there's a load of trees down one side which usually shield us from the, from the sea wind. Despite the remote location, the teams have been the subject of much worldwide attention over the years, most notably when Adidas filmed a commercial here, which highlighted the league and which featured David Beckham, Stephen Gerrard and Patrick Vieira. Best and key players. I don't like to be biased, to be honest with you. I, I, it, it depends who's more sober, to be honest with you. I say probably the best on our team at the minute is Rob Greenlaw. I, was, uh, I think he's, I think he's trying to get the um, the best player of the season because I've got it the last three out of four years. So I think he's trying to get it off me. So he's trying a bit more. He's actually tackling this year. So it's usually every season the league's pretty close towards the end. I mean, if it looks like someone's going to be completely running away with it, both the captains will sit down maybe swap a few players around just so people don't lose interest. So it's, it's usually pretty competitive and with the cup games as well, they will usually spread around. So it's good. The same man referees every game at Garrison Field and he's highly qualified to do so. He's officiated as a fourth official in the English Premier League and his name is Paul Charnock. The standard is quite high, it's Sunday morning level and can be Sunday morning level plus. Uh, some of the players, if they were playing on the mainland, could uh, 
could earn some money I suppose, a little bit in semi-professional level but uh, they just need training and uh, coaching um, but we only have the two teams here so you can only get to be so, so good really. Each weekly fixture is played on a Sunday at 10.30 in the morning. The early starts can be a challenge for the older members of this footballing community. This might be my last season. I've got arthritis in both knees. Um, my health is still okay, although I've had one or two problems. Um, I don't know, I'll keep turning up until they throw me out, I suppose. Transworld Sports' visit to the Silly Isles coincided with the seventh league game of the season. Reigning champions, the Garrison Gunners in red, went into the encounter with a healthy six-point lead in the table. Early on in the game, Anthony Givens gave the Gunners the lead with a close-range header. In typically blustery conditions, the Gunners then extended their lead thanks to their top scorer, Joel Ware, and he nearly got another shortly after. Russell Hutchins missed a penalty for the Wanderers, but they did pull a goal back and the match ended in a 2-1 victory for the Gunners. Bearing in mind the conditions, thought we defended quite well in the first half, which was the hard half into the wind. Um, we kept the ball all right at times. And then second half, when we had the advantage of the wind, we didn't play well enough. I missed the penalty, which didn't help. And we hit the bar. I think maybe a draw would have been a fair result, but never mind. There'll be plenty more chances for the Wanderers to get their revenge on their old enemy in one of world football's strangest rivalries. I wasn't too confident the last couple of years with the, the lack of youngsters coming through, but I say this year we've had four, five, six good keen youngsters coming through, so I say it's looking pretty rosy. I say we've got a nice mid-range um, core players from like 30 to 40 so that should last quite quite a few years. Mm -hmm.